long pull round. There it is. <laughs> Happy days. We're just getting straight on with it. Right then guys, welcome to another episode of Hooked. My name's John Murray and I'm an angling addict. And today I'm on the banks of the River Air at West Adelsea and I've drawn permanent peg number six in the Northern River Masters. You'll have to excuse me because I'm a little bit out of breath. Um, we're literally one minute out from the all in and I've just nicely got set up and there we go, that's time. So I'm gonna go through the rigs and everything, the approach as we go along. But basically right now I need to get started. Okay, as I say, I'm rushing a bit, but we'll just start getting a little bit of bait in. So I'm gonna start to feed hemp and castor on an 11 meter pole line. I've also set up a 14 foot waggler rod to fish beyond the pole line. I've got two rigs set up for the pole. One's a 0.4 gram strung out style uh, rig. It's a 0.4 gram mat float. I used it on the New Junction Canal. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it up here somewhere. Go and check it out after this one. The intention is to feed hemp, castor, tears on this pole line. See if we can catch some quality roach. I think this is going to be the main line of attack today. I'm also just going to cup in a ball of ground bait on this just to kick it, really kick it off. Um, I've got red maggots, uh, some pinkies as well and some worms if I need them for the feeder. So I have set a feeder up, it's an 11 foot feeder and that's for fishing just beyond the middle line. Um, I don't think it's going to be a feeder stroke skimmer bream day down here today. It's very, very hot. Uh, well, I say very hot. It's about 20, 21 degrees. And uh, to be perfectly honest, you know, I think it's probably too bright for the bream, but then stranger things have happened. So as I say, I'm just going to put a, a neat ball of, well, it's actually... Van der Neind. no it's not Van der Neind. it's uh, Bait Tech. Bait Tech Bream Dark and uh, G5 mixed together and uh, yeah I'm just going to pop one ball in, somebody's balling it up above me but I'm going to put it in by the cup, keep it tight and just loose feed over the top. Don't want to go crazy right now, don't know the pegs. And I think loose feeding might be the way to go. We've got probably a very similar depth to what I had on the new junction at 5 metres. So at 11 metres we're fishing off the top floor. We've, we've got somewhere in the order of 8.5 foot I would say. I'm just going to line up. I think there's a couple of white flowers on the far bank. I'm just going to pop that in one in slightly downstream. There's a bit of a downstream wind on and that's why I've got the waggler as well in case the pull becomes too difficult. So I've got the strung out rig, I've got the, uh, I've also got a 0.75 gram colmic float on which has got a little olivet on just in case I need to hold steadier if the wind becomes problematic or I think the fish want the bait static. So really that's it in terms of the approach. Um, so probably we'll start out with this pole line right now. We'll then move on to the waggler if needs be. And then failing that, if we start struggling, I'll move on to the tip line. So a little bit of a different approach to usual where people usually go straight out on the tip. I'm going to start out with my strung out rig. So, if you can see it, that's the little map, 0.4 gram float. And we've got strung out number 10s all the way down the line. I've got a 08 bottom on at the moment and a size 20 hook. And obviously, uh, we can change that if we need to. And I'm just going to start with a, a red maggot. Just put red maggot on the hook, it's a good starting point. Just keep feeding hemp, castor and tares. Hope that they come over it. Just 
gauge the, gauge the swing. So in we go. Now the waggler is set up probably half depth of what we've got the pole line set up right now. And that was another option. Should I set up a shallow rig for this? But actually, there's a little bit of flow on this river. It's not too bad. I mean, the 0.4 gram flow runs through quite nicely and he's actually lifting in the flow just enticingly. We had a little bite on the uh, red maggot there and I'm looking upstream because a great big fish has just rolled in the swim above me. And I don't know if the angler is into one. But we're getting bites on the red maggot so far. So there's plenty of fish to be had by the looks of things. Small roach. Hopefully these will increase in size as the day goes on. So I can get bites on the red maggot right now. So I'm going to try caster straight away. Just got to clear the inside weeds. So I'd like to feed before I go out, but I think it's not going to be too much of a problem if you just keep feeding once I've laid the rig in. Little and often. And we'll just try and figure out what the best rig is. There's a bite straight away on caster, so they're having that. The bulk down rig might be better. Thought about setting the whip up. But with the way the wind can get on here, I think we'll just have a bit more control with the pole. And we're straight over the top of these fish. A nice pace for fishing the pole. Got the five jura slip in. That's another tiny little roach. Let's up the improving stamp. So I think I'll just go back on the red maggot to start with, or back on it, getting bites on the caster. And I'll keep feeding it. I know they're having it. No pole rollers today, straight up the bank. Tried shipping off to the right of me, but I was getting caught up in the weeds down here on the left. So I've just basically got the tulip and the sock, push it up the bank, it's poking up in the air and it's quite secure in there. No worries about it. And at 11 metres, it's not too long to manage on these relatively steep banks. So the wind's just picked up a little bit. I'm going to pick up this 0.75 gram float. It's a rugby ball shape. Got an olivet down the line, a couple of number 10s below that. Uh, the olivet's about 18 inch from the hook. Again, an 08 bottom and a size 20 carbon match hook. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very old school float. Probably had it 20 plus years, but seemed like the perfect pattern choice for this swim today. I'm going to drop a caster on this one and I have to set this one just ever so slightly deeper than the other rig probably about an inch or so two inches I think so we've got about an inch on bottom whereas the other rig is about an inch off bottom if it hung down straight which it won't in the floor so that rig's a lot more stable oh got a fish on there but bounced off. We can hold this one back quite a lot more.
but it doesn't give me the drop through the water that the other rig will give me. So these fish are taking maggots, they're taking casters. Let's see if they'll take a tear. Sometimes it takes a while to get them onto tears. But the chances are they may be, may be having it right from the off today. while the wind is pushing downstream I'm going to fish this more positive rig maybe just had a dip on the float there okay so they're not quite on the tears yet I think we'll keep feeding those they'll come onto them and this downstream wind really is why I've not bothered setting the whip up a flat calm would probably be okay with it, but it comes a bit of a handful if you're fishing long lines of hand when you get a breeze on like this. And that was a good bite there. I was just trying to put some feed in the catapult. Quite a fat roach. That's a better fish. That's definitely the kind of stamp we want to turn up. So I may up my hook size if we start to catch well. Ooh. Where's he going? Straight in the weeds. That's a nice roach. He's all over the shop. Coming here. I'm not quite sure <laughs> how to do this. I think we're just going to have to clip the pole up. Good grief. This is difficult. Very, very difficult with the banks behind. That's a lovely, lovely stamp roach. So I was getting a bit of a run around on the five dura there. It's set fairly soft, so it just goes to show you when I was using it on the Ecclesfield video a few weeks back, it was too strong for those soft mouth skimmers. If you haven't seen that video, go and check it out. I'll put a link to it up here somewhere. There's another bite. So we've got a few fish starting to queue up. And I may go up an elastic size if I'm gonna struggle with the weeds down the inside here. <clears throat> That's not too bad. We're just struggling to push the net up behind us. Quality roach. fish. Ooh. And he's going in, he's going in the weeds. The roach again. Lovely fish.
these are a good stamp. Now the wind is easing off. Which I would go back on the drop through rig. But this positive bolt down rig seems to be working really nicely at the moment. So I'm just going to stick with it. These weeds on the inside are a bit of a nightmare. I can see this fish and he's all over them. Come here. Look at that beauty. That's an absolute beauty. Right then guys, I'm not going to say it's all the bed of roses right now, but um, I introduced another ball of ground bait and it literally just killed the swim. So I've had a little bit of a sort of 15, 20 minute period where I just couldn't get a bite. No matter what the rig I put on, I even tried the waggler over the top. But, seems to have come back now, still feeding 
castor and hemp, but I'm actually fishing red maggot on the hook. And I've upped the elastic onto a midi reactor car, orange, which is just a little bit stronger. And I'm glad I did because the last couple of fish have been proper stamp fish. The only trouble is I'm still struggling to land fish. It's better with the orange elastic on the inside with the weed problem that I've got down here, as you can probably see. But the landing net situation with the bank behind me is just very difficult. Really am struggling with that. The bulk down rig seems to be the best and just holding it fairly steady in position seems to be the way to go. So I think all we'll do is just keep loose feeding. If I need any kind of big top up, it's just gonna be a pot of hemp. Decent fish. It's a perch. <sighs> Come on, float. Bloody thing. This definitely ain't pretty fishing today. Just every fish I land, I've got this weed to contend with. Float getting stuck in the net. It's just very, very difficult in here. So I'm just losing so much time because of the mess that I'm getting into. And I just, I can't figure out a better way to do it. Peg is just awkward. these inside weeds that are causing me the issues. And the bank behind me with the landing net. Right, so a little update for you folks. I've switched to feeding maggot because I've had some good fish on maggot, but <laughs> conversely, the stamp of fish has gone down now. Um, really, I was just struggling. Struggling to get a bite. Can't really get a bite on tears. So it's hemp and maggot at the moment. We'll keep trying caster again, see if it does bring a better fish. I'm just trying to get 
positive bites at the moment. Maggot's bringing it. That's another one. But look, the stamp has gone down. So I don't know where the better fish are now. I'm definitely getting battered off the peg to my right. He's been catching quite consistently. And good splash of fish as well. So we're gonna to have to pick the game up. That's another one. I don't think it's worth changing methods. I think long pole is definitely the method to be on down here. It's just presenting it right. This is a better fish. He's going for them weeds and he's in them. Come on. Just go and net them on top of the weeds. Got him. Right. I'm try and be a little bit more deliberate so we don't get in a mess. That's better. Better stamp. Difficult to hold up for the camera, but maybe this change of bait will serve as well now. Well, it's gone quiet again. Just gone a bit funny. Oh my goodness me, there's a water skier coming down the river at breakneck speed. SO328, let's get him reported. Unbelievable. Look at the waves. Look at the waves coming off that. What an absolute knob. Well, we're into a fish. No thanks to this idiot, it's coming back.
Well, we get it all happen in these matches, don't we? First time I've seen a water skier coming down the river. Right, well I honestly don't know what to do. I don't feel like I'm catching enough on this pole line. Not enough quality, at least, to actually do any good from this peg. I feel like I'm getting beat. So, I'm not sure the waggler's gonna be any better. I don't know whether to just risk it and have a look on the feeder. Trouble is I could just end up wasting time. And there might be some better quality turn up on this line. It's another small fish though. They're not even roach now. We're getting bleak and dace. Still another dace. Where have the roach gone? Where have the roach gone? Right. I'm going nowhere fast on this line. So I'm gonna take the gamble. Stick some ground bait on it. I don't think it worked last time, but there's no quality fish down there now. But that's not really what we want to see. Yeah, that's what we're getting. I just feel like this match is slipping away from me. The lad to me right is probably pulling in three or four fish to my one and they're probably a better stamp by the sound of them. <sighs> uh, it's just got worse and worse. There's just no quality down there. I thought at the start of the day we were on for a good one. But it turned out disappointing yet again. I don't honestly know what I've done wrong today. I don't feel like I've fished a good match. I feel like I've been at sixes and sevens most of the day. But I don't feel like done anything particularly wrong other than get caught up on the weeds and snagged in the bank behind me with the net and stuff like that but just don't allow me to settle properly just 
just wondering whether I should poke another section beyond what we're fishing now, but I'm limited by <laughs> the van parked up the bank. So I might just run the waggler just slightly beyond this pole line, try and set it to full depth, see if there's any ropes just sat slightly beyond where we're fishing. <clears throat> Let's do it, nothing to lose. Oh, bite straight away there. That's a quality fish. Is that where they've been? Picked up another one. Ah, oh, this is amazing. Oh, get out of those weeds. That's another clunker. Well, this is really unusual. I managed two fish in quick succession on the waggler. And now I can't get a proper bite. Just had one there, but it seemed like a small fish again. I just... I don't know what's wrong with the swim. I want to be right is emptying it really. And whether my tactics are wrong or can't all be wrong though. That was the bait, but again, nothing there. Nothing there. So, what to do?
And there's another roach on the waggler. So maybe if I'd switched onto this earlier, it would give me some a chance. But pretty much everything that can go wrong has gone wrong today. I've got snagged on the keep now, I've snapped my hook length off, I've dropped my towel in the drink. Oh well, well, that's too hot. And just to cap it off, the other camera's died. So that's two GoPros gone down with the heat. I'm thinking I should have just fished maggot today. The tears have been a dead loss. Well, Waggler's certainly producing a few nice roach, but I think it's just too little too late. There's another. And another one. So I feel like they're just hanging downstream a bit and further out. I should have been there a long time ago. I'm stuck again. Just a nightmare peg to operate in this. Far easier just to swing them, but risk losing them. feel like any chance of qualifying is gone. Probably any chance of the section as well. Another fish. Ooh. It's risky. It's risky swinging them. But Nothing to lose now. Well, that's another one on the waggler. If only I'd switched to it earlier. And another. It's 
a nice fish. Look at this rubbish, every time you've got to deal with the net. There's a downstream wind on at the minute and it's just ruining my presentation. I'm trying to cast beyond, sink the line. Can't present the uh, bait on the waggler while it's blowing like this. Although it looks like it's turning around a little bit now. Well, there's eight minutes remaining. I know I've done nowhere near enough. I've had 40 fish. I bet the lad to me right's probably had 100 fish. But you live and learn. And there we go. As soon as that wind calms down, those roach are on this waggler line. That's a nice fish. I'm gonna swing it. I'm gonna risk it. Lovely. I feel like I've wasted an opportunity today, but I guess, you know, Fish in the pool, it felt like there was fish there to be had. But they just started getting smaller. And I wasn't picking up these quality roach. If I'd been able to push another section on the pool, maybe, maybe I'd have got them on that. But picking the waggler up. At least we found that they are still there, they're just a little bit further out. There's another one. Oh, that felt like a, a good fish that was fighting back with me there. Yeah, nice fish. I like that one. And another. They're absolutely on song on this waggler now. And another quality one. Look at that. Couple of kg bites there. We're nearly in, up for time now. Chuck it back out. See if we can get the last fish. Wind's got up. And that's time. So, a day of what ifs. Right guys. I'm going to get packed up and then I'll weigh in for you as I always do but unfortunately I don't think it's enough. Stay tuned. We've had a bag full here. Well done. It's best weight. 21. Well, ten. No, twelve pounds. Oh, two pounds. Oh, two pounds. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, for 21. <laughs> What's it? Oh, I done well. Hmm. You've got more than me. Oh, wow. What's your name, bud? Bit of boss. P what? Boss. P L. I've balls it up, Gary. Uh, <laughs> got not waggle till late. I'm really got. Yeah. yeah. Could only get them them up pole. I was catching up pole. I was getting but I was getting bites all day, so I stuck on it too long. Mm -hmm. But that said, when wind's been blowing downstream, waggler's been no good. But they've, they've been there, they've been further out beyond my pole then. What are you what? I am worried, I don't know. Aren't you? Big three times. Well, I may as well wear, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I'd seen it all till uh, I've seen these Muppets water skiing. A missed opportunity, I think, Gary. But at least I've had a few fish. Seven one. Seven one. Cheers, Ben. No cigar today. Lovely job. <laughs> <laughs> Angling addict. <laughs> right then guys, quick round up for you. I've weighed seven pounds something. I don't feel like I've done myself justice today. I think I've spent too long on the long pole and should have got on that waggler line a bit sooner. Um, Pete Coles has won the section with £12.10 I think to my right hand side. There's been a couple of good weights down to my left. I think a couple of tens and maybe an £11 as well. So yeah. I've messed up a bit, but hey, you know, I don't know the river that well. I've learnt a lot today, and I was kind of led to believe it was going to be a hemp and tears day. Uh, as you've seen, hemp, tears, caster, it's not fished that well. As soon as I've switched to the maggot, that's what we've been catching those quality roach on. So, you live and learn, and I'll know for next year. Right, I'll get all the results up for you now. So there you have it guys, well done to all the section winners and qualifiers, hopefully I can do it on the next one. Right guys, thanks for watching, and until the next one, tight lines.